I'm not allowed to. I guess I have to fully be reliant on Jesus Christ. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Good morning, everybody. Why does it look so dark, Tara? Is it our phone? Is it? That's why I wore an orange blazer today yes. to brighten things up, girl. I, I feel like I'm like in the mob or something, <laughs> like a little mobbish. Uh, good morning, everybody. How are We're you? We're just wardrobe and what do we got going on here? You look good. <laughs> I got my orange on. That's why I go on. It's one of those days oh. that I just I I needed to wear something bright. So I love it. So we're gonna be bright today. And uh, thank you all for being with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who would we have? Rachel. Rachel. Thank you. And Lisa. Good morning to you. Um, is that Veronica? Yes. Good morning, Veronica, Veronica and Ariel. Ariel. Okay, she's yes. in California. I, she's five. Up. Is it she's five? Five a.m. Five a.m. And she's on here bright and early. Oh, I love it. Dear friend, Ariel, I love that we have friends around the U.S. I love it. Joining too. us at all times, so we have nothing to complain about. It's 8 a.m. here, so we are, we're okay. It's true, and we do, we do have nothing to complain about. I mean, it's, That's true. it's just amazing what God is doing and sharing, even in what we're all going through together. Yes. Let me know where, let us both know where you're, where you're at today. I just love to go back to here and read where people are. Are at what city? Even if you're in Michigan, let me know. Let us know where you're at in Michigan. Yeah. Um, Just to know where our neighbors are. You know. All neighbors. All now. our neighbors. All our neighbors. So today, Tara, I am. I don't even know if you have any announcements, but Tara and I were talking. I've been. I did not have a good night's sleep. Mm. I was. Uh, I felt like every time I went to sleep, I felt like someone was tapping me and waking me up within like 40 minutes of a really solid deep sleep. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is. This was all night long. And then this morning, just spending time with him, I still had that anxiety. It's like a, it's like, I feel like an anxious feeling. Yeah. And I think it has something to do with today's verse because this verse, um, it just, it's, it's a, it's, it's piercing a part of my soul that I've been wrestling with for a while. Mm -hmm. So I'm just asking for you all to pray for us as well, because I don't, I really, the, the position of my heart today is, and I just keep praying this over and over again, Lord, humble me. Mm -hmm. And that's a daring prayer. Mm -hmm. Humble me, humble me, humble me, because when you ask God to humble you, <laughs> he, yes. he will. And he, he has done that with me, whether that means he's had to embarrass me or, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, humility always, always, always ends in, um, oh. in beauty. Yes. Um, in and when you and say, and, and when you and I say humble me in this hour, it's scary. It can be scary to the flesh. It can be scary to our soul. Yeah. Because then it's like, he's really going to have his way. He's going to say what he wants to say. That's right. And we can't block anything. That's and I, right. and that's what you and I were processing for a hot second is like, yeah. you know, yeah. that I don't know if I ended up passing along that image, but that's what God gave me is that our spirit is doing the Snoopy dance. Like our spirit's so happy. Like right now your spirit is so elated because it Maybe. knows your spirit, capital S yeah. spirit in your spirit. It knows something yeah. that you and our flesh don't know yet yeah. while our soul is like, Ugh. and so to be humbled means hush soul. <laughs> Relax. It's going to be okay. We are in his view. We're in his yeah. presence. Mm -hmm. Let the Holy Spirit go. And it's like, yeah. oh, so I really appreciate you being vulnerable, like um, transparent and intentional with the word humility and humble. Because we're live. We don't, this is unscripted. Yeah. It, it, it's a whole other I, level I, of humility. I pray it is always unscripted. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a, you're right. This is a whole new level. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for grabbing your pen, leaning in close, getting on the edge of your seat, and really believing that, that God is speaking to you personally and intimately, mm -hmm. tenderly, piercingly, uh, radically, relentlessly. Yes. He's, a, he's such a good God in that way. Yep. And um, we get to we do. do this together, right, with mm -hmm. all of us here every single morning, five days a week. Come on. Right. How did um, I and Ryan and I did not get to listen to the men's study. We're going to listen to it tonight. Oh, How did it, it go? It was so good. Mm. It was on the Good Samaritan. I love it. You know, it was on the Good So how can it not be? It was great. Ron, Ron and Jamie did a great job. Mm. There, um, Jamie just, we watched it together and Jamie was smiling the whole time. And he's like, did you get what Ron said? Did you, did you hear that? Rewind it, Joy. Listen oh. to this. And then right before Ron would talk, then Jamie would go, Joy, no, listen. Don't look at your phone. Listen. He loves Ron so deep. He has so much respect for him. And um, 
they just together as a team, I think they, they do exceptionally well. Phenomenal. And they don't, it's not them that does it, it's, it's, the, it's the Holy Spirit. But Ron said some, some really good quotes last night that uh, I just keep, keep hearing. So I can't wait. Talk and I have to talk about humility. Thank That's you. Face was, yeah. Sorry. Anna. No, go ahead. I'm just so thankful that Facebook, this is a free service. We can have our highs and lows about social media, but how God is asking us to use it and how he's allowing this, this um, free service to be able to have it there. Mm -hmm. It's not gone, so it's on YouTube and it's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm so excited. Okay, it's making me a little nervous. What? Like a child. It's not even near there. Well, like oh it's gonna hit your elbow or something. Okay, it's a me thing, maybe. Like I would have hit that yet, you know, five minutes ago. Um, She's talking so. about my coffee mug that was yes, right next to my elbow. <laughs> Which, knowing me, that I didn't want it to drop. Well, I did it last night at dinner. Um, so, I mean, I spilled water everywhere. So, oh. I, it's a me thing the way I. Okay. Well, at least it's water. I was, at, when I was oh, a kid, yeah, yeah. gosh, it just reminded me. I always spilled my milk. It was like me. I'm always <laughs> spilling my milk at the dinner table. Why? Well, that's what I was picturing. It's the son that always spills his drink. Shay. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan <laughs> yeah. always fills his we drink, and I end up doing it. It was so funny. Uh, he looked at me like, how does it feel? How does it feel, Mama? <laughs> how does it feel to have accidents happen? No, he is very sweet about it. Anyway, good morning. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Everybody, thanks for checking in with us, telling us where you're coming from. Thank you, Rosemary. Rosemary said she, her and her husband together watched um, the men's right. study last night. It's a good that. one. To, it's a good one to watch together for sure. Thank you, Rosemary, yeah. for taking the time to watch that, taking the time to be fed mm. um, by God Himself last night. Yeah, grateful. And thank you for sharing the Tuesday night messages and um, and the you know our five day week. Our, um, these Bible studies, thank you for just pushing it into the world and letting people decide if they want to watch or not. But I, the stories we hear of, well, my friend told me about it. Well, my friend told me about it again. Well, I wasn't ready. I didn't. And they have all these, this behind the scene. And then boom, they start watching. And sometimes they, you know, pick it back up because of work or whatever. And it's because of you guys pushing these messages, these Bible studies along. It, um, it truly is because what we hear a lot say. of is people saying, I don't know how I stumbled upon yeah. you. I don't know how, I, how this happened. And I'm thinking it's because probably some God himself, yes. But also when, when people are watching and they're mm -hmm. sharing it, unbeknownst to other people that are part of their Facebook family, they just happen to stumble upon yeah. it as well. So It's the formula behind the scenes. So we're really, it's pretty awesome. His, Thank you very much for his, working alongside us. Yes. His word mm -hmm. is truly doing what it says it does. Yeah that it changes your life awesome. it transforms your life it adds peace and hope and joy in the uncertainty mm -hmm. of today's time it adds this to your life and so i love that he's god just continuously proves himself to be right Come on. Over and, and here over. we are in james chapter one mm -hmm. we're at the very last verse of chapter one yeah we don't know if it's going to be chapter two tomorrow or what's going to happen but we are in james chapter one verse 27 part two and hear you just what you just said and then we're like oh my gosh it's like a clean slate reading 27 again today yeah it's like another dose of goodness yeah and I thought I was filled yesterday so we're doing part two and uh, before we turn this on I, I I didn't know again we don't know what each other is going to say in that time with the, with the Lord and I'm thinking are we gonna need it part three so yet again, we're all just surrendering. We're just ready to receive open heart, open mind. Don't let us terrorize it. Don't let us come in and humanize it. Mm. Will you just have your way, Lord, through your scripture and through your word, through James in this situation. And so he is going to have it. It's gonna be awesome. So I can't wait to hear what he's put on your heart this morning. Hmm. And um, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. All right, let's go. Let's pray. Mm. Um, let's see what he has to share with yeah. us today. So That's wherever right. you're at, just allow yourself to tune out the distractions around you. Mm. And uh, we're going to give this over to our good Father. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for you. Thank you for your, um, your tangible presence. Thank you for your enoughness. Thank you for um, this immeasurable, unfathomable, incomprehensible love that you have for every single person right now, the person that feels unlovable, uh, the person that feels unseen, the person that feels unworthy, um, the person that is knee deep in, in pride, the person that is self-protecting, 
the person, rather, that um, maybe just feels that uh, they're not worth uh, your, even your look. Mm. And um, so, Father, all of us there and everything in between, would you just get right in, just get right on in, right on in, Lord mm. God. Mm -hmm. And um, get right near us, close to us this morning to be experienced, not just in the feelings of emotions, but I'm talking at a soul level. Allow us to, ex to that we know, that we know, that we know, yes. that as we're listening to your Bible study this morning, we're listening to your very words come through our mouths, uh, that we know, that we know, that we know that you are in this, that you are feeding us, that you have a feast waiting for us, a breakfast feast this yes. morning that only you could have hand-cooked for mm. us, the delicacies, Lord God, that you want to you want to spoon feed us. And Father, we thank you that this uh, this feast is not only nutritious, but it's life-giving, life-saving, life-shifting, life-transforming. It's renewing us, it's restoring us, it's giving us life in abundance. Father, thank you that you are the God of hope. You are the hope of the world, nothing else. Nothing, no other organization, no church. You, Jesus, you yes. alone yes, are yes. the hope of the world. And so we put our hope, we put our trust in you because you are trustworthy. You are seen faithful to those that are faithful. You are seen pure to those mm -hmm. who are choosing purity. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that we don't have to put our own, our own um, effort and being strong and, and trying to get this all right and performance and perfection. Thank you that we can let that go. We can finally release that. It's not by might, my might, right. but it's by you, Jesus Christ. Yes. So, Father, <clears throat> allow your word to penetrate each one of us, Lord God. Bring people on today that maybe have never come on today, Lord God. God. And not yes. just to be entertained, not just to see this bright colored jacket I got on today, <laughs> but, Lord, to see your light, mm. to see you oozing, Lord God. Is, yes. is that one man you know who he is this, this weekend here at the barn just said, mm -hmm. for the first time I've experienced Jesus, and I feel like I'm glowing. Yes. Father, can we all just turn this off today and yes. when we go out into the world, we have a smile on our face, yes. not because we've got good circumstances, but because we're glowing, because we just experienced the presence of you. We cannot help yeah. but be smiling from the inside out when we are next to you, near you, with you. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of security. There's a knowing, Father, that we are safe, that we are secure, that we are loved, that we are enough, that we are worthy, that we, are belo that we belong yes. to you. Because you are a good father. We love you. We praise you. Jesus, have your way today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Woo! Okay, let's go with my orange jacket. Going. Yes. I can't let's wait. Go. Okay, so to the human mind, it makes sense to me, and it's more comfortable, I was going to say, if um, because of what we said literally the 30 second before hitting go, is if I go because I'm continuing yesterday, okay. kind of picking up where we left off, yeah. but the spirit is loud and clear you are to start and <laughs> I would really love it for you to start it might not make sense but I'm gonna I love when I can let go of things that make sense because I don't think wow. I want things to make sense in my understanding I would agree with that. right so we're gonna flip the script on this little mind of mine I'd love for the spirit just to work through you and then we'll see what comes of it Okay, so welcome. If you're just joining us, we are in James 127, Part B. Um, so grab a Bible if you have one at your house, wherever you're at. If not, just really lean in. Like we always say, just get on the edge of that seat and really listen to what he wants to share today. Um, I do believe he has a word for us. He has a word for us every day. Yeah. Um, and so I'm really praying in particular that it just comes out clearly and boldly and mm. courageously and tenderly yes. and kindly today and lovingly is the way that um, I feel like he's impressing on my heart. But I just want a, a, a warning here. There's, there's a stirring. You know, I think God places certain things on our heart that gives us an, um, a stirring within our soul, right? The things that maybe just between you and him and your journal time that you're praying over. And this subject happens to be one of my big ones I've been praying over for probably the last four or five years. Yeah. And it's been pretty intense, sometimes more intense than other times. But this particular one has been a big one for me. And so there is a stirring within me right now, and I, I can't put my finger on it. I can't describe it with human language. So I'm going to be extra dependent on the Holy Spirit, and that's why I've been praying nothing but just humble me, humble me, humble me, because I don't want to come across self-righteous, judgmental. I, 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 he knows my heart, and that's all that matters. That's and so right. <clears throat> it might not even come up today. I don't know. But hmm. all I know is that this verse is powerful. 
Um, and so let's uh, allow this, this, this particular verse to um, wreck us at a heart level, not yeah. just be words and not just be a sentence and not just be a Bible study and not just be the church lady from Saturday Night Live, even though that's funny, <laughs> but truly recognizing, Lord, my life here is so short. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I even have tomorrow. We really do not know that. Make sure we understand the brevity of life. And I don't want to be Debbie Downer here on a, on a Wednesday morning, but I really feel like this needs to be remind. We need to be reminded of that and how short it is. And so this is really important that we pay attention to what it is that God is, is wanting us to see and to hear today. Yeah. So for 127B, what, what mine says is it's the, the second half of it. Yesterday it said pure and genuine religion. And we redefine what that religion actually meant, right? It's an external um, outworking of an internal reverence for, for God. Mm. Um, in the sight of God, the Father means caring for orphans and widows in the distress. We talked a little bit about that. Remember the loneliness factor that we can experience. And refusing to let the world corrupt you, mm. right? And then another version says to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And that's the one I'm going to go with because I really wanted to key in on the word polluted. Did you have polluted in your translation? I had corrupt. Corrupted. And I really, I focused on corrupt. Ooh, yeah. so it's going to be good. Mm. It's going to be so good. So it's I, so the good. Holy Spirit really had me looking at the word polluted, 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 that we are to keep ourselves, right? Everyone listening right now, we are to keep right. ourselves. But yet the God, God has called us to be in the world, and we all know this, but not of the world. So what does that even mean? How do I do that? Mm. It's like this, it's this difficult dance sometimes that we're engaged in and wanting to bubble wrap ourselves from, from the enemy and yet in the world and the darkness and the perversion of it all, and yet finding ourselves that we need to be in it. Yeah. And yet, how do we get, how are we still effective, but not to the point where we're ineffective, That's right? That's so good, yep. And so, as I was thinking about this last night and talking this over with my husband a little bit, I was talking to him about the word pollution, and he reminded me that in a, he had a vision almost like a, of a, an apple bushel. Now, bear with me. But did, I didn't know this. The top yeah. apple, if it's rotten, there is a pollution, there is like a like an element, a chemical mm. pollution that comes out from that apple, and it pollutes the rest of all the other apples. So it really came in the from a real statement. It truly did. Come on, that's I where love it, that. That's where it came from. Mm. And oftentimes it's very much like that in our own life. There can be, there can, it's almost like what Jesus says, like the ye, there's a little bit of yeast in that yeah. batch of dough and a little bit of yeast can pollute and distort and pervert and skew the entire batch of dough. It's very much mm. the same with this bushel analogy. And, but the thing about pollution, if we're going to be using this particular verse, to keep oneself from being polluted by the world, um, pollution is in the air. And oftentimes, air pollution you can't see. Mm. And the enemy, there's a, there's a scripture in the verse that says the enemy is the enemy of the airwaves. He's like in the airwaves, right? Yeah. He's the pollution in the very air of the, of the world that we live and operate in. But its effects are deadly. You can't see the pollution in the air, but the effects are de deadly. The chemical release of pollution is deadly for us. Um, and, you know, in my own home, Tara, we've got this, you guys have this, this like carbon monoxide uh, I hope you're all sticking the with detector. me. I hope this is making sense. But this carbon monoxide detector, we don't know when there's carbon monoxide in our house. We don't know, but it's but it's lethal, yeah. right? Can't yes. see it, mm -hmm. but when that detector goes off, girl, we know that there's something that's going to actually kill us. And it's this detector. And the, the I was just asking the Lord last night, like Lord, I need one of those detectors. We all it's called discernment, but I, I really want one of those detectors. I need to be plugged in in order for that detector to be going off in my own life. We all need to be plugged in. And plugging in is truly plugging into the Holy Spirit every single day. It's like plugging in your refrigerator. It might look really beautiful from the outside, but if it's not plugged in, you open up that refrigerator for six days and that chicken that's been sitting in there yeah. <laughs> is not gonna smell so good. We need to be plugging in mm. consistently every single day of our life. And um, you know, it just reminded me, I was at Meyer and um, I, uh, I was in line, and it was, one, it was right before Thanksgiving, and this line was like, we you know the line that's like yes. wrapped around, so I'm there forever, and my phone's dead. So I'm like, gosh, I'm in line, I can't do anything, can't even look at my phone, and the magazines are way up there, I can't even go get a magazine. <laughs> so what I do is I people watch, and I was watching people come and go out of Meyer, and there's one person that stands there, and I don't know what was going on that day, but that, let up, that stealing alarm, you know, when somebody walks yes. out the door and then they're like, did I steal something? And they got that look on their face. The man who was working at Meyer, he was so done. He's like, go. It was like, oh, it was like one. It was going off all the time. He's like, just go. 
And I was just watching. He's just amused me. It was like every four or five people was like, just go. I'm like, gosh, you could steal anything. You could steal a TV. And he's just like, just go. But you know, it reminded me sometimes where our own, um, our own alarm goes off when the enemy tries stealing things from us. Mm. And we're like, just go ahead. I'm just going to ignore that. I'm just going to keep moving on. Just, just go right ahead. It's all good. And, you know, we do that in our own life, yes, do we not? Well, At least yeah. I do. The enemy just has a field day and the alarm's going off and God's like, Joy, wake up. It's happening. It's like, ah, it's all good. And um, I, I really want this to go in the way that I want it to go in. But I just, I feel like, it, you know, there's, there's just right now in this particular season of my life, um, there's a lot that's going on in the airwaves. And... For me, I'm just going to be really honest and really frank right now. Um, a particular area of my, I wish you didn't let me go first, but a particular area that I just, it's breaking my heart is the church. And I don't want to be the one to say this. And I don't want to cry. I don't want to do this. I know. But he wants you to. You go. You're talking about the lower C, the local church, the church buildings. You're talking about the philosophy and the... It's actually, I think they're tears. I'm so sorry. They're tears of joy and they're tears of sorrow. Mm -hmm. Because I love the church. I love the people of the yes. church. Yeah. I love his people. I love you. More than, more than just on a human level. My spirit loves you. The, the Jesus in me loves his people. Yeah. And it hurts my heart when I see that the world has come into our church. And it's so subtle, Tara. And it's like, yeah. it's, it's truly like um, the chemical release of the carbon monoxide. And we're, we don't see it. Yeah. We don't see it. And I don't want to come across as judgmental. I don't want to come across as self-righteous, but this has been an ongoing heaviness in my life for five years. And part of it is why we built the barn. We are not a church, and I, we, we love the local church. Mm -hmm. We still are, we, we go to a local church, and I'm so grateful for my local church. But when I start to see that the enemy, it's not the pastors, it's not the church itself, it's Satan himself, his, his, he has looked to and fro, and he has found that if he can take the church down, the leader down, he can take all the sheep with him. And so if he can get into the pastor and he can, and I'm not referring to my pastor. I'm not even talking about my church. I'm not even talking about a particular church. You're right, church. I was going to say, you're not, the, the, Jesus is speaking through you. So, yeah. I, it just, it's you're not a, speaking to anyone in particular, anything. I mean, there are particular churches in my heart right now. Yes, okay. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm not going to lie. Okay. But, I'm, but I'm, I'm speaking, those are ones that God has shown me examples of. Mm -hmm. um, and what, I, what I'm starting to see is that we are becoming, and again, I, I'm not coming from a self-righteous. This is just a very deep part in my heart that I'm processing before the Lord, knowing he's big enough. I can't take care of this. Mm -hmm. But what I'm starting to see is that there is a there is a foundation with churches in general where we are more gift oriented than we are fruit oriented. So, for instance, last night I just heard uh, an interview by um, Jackie Hill Perry. She's one of those newer up and coming. She's just a great speaker. I just love to listen to what she has to say. And she's written a, a book. And she was saying last night in a message I just heard, ironically, that she. Um, she was a brand new Christian, but she had the gift of, of teaching. She had the gift of, of preaching it. And so she said two weeks into going to this new church, um, they asked her to start preaching. And she said, so I preached it. She's, you know, she, she, she used her gift. She preached it. She said, but internally, I didn't have the character. Internally, I didn't have the integrity. Mm. Internally, my roots were so shallow. And, you know, the, and then everyone was like, girl, you preached it. The Holy Spirit's all over you. And she's like, it, I was just using my gifts. It's the fruit that identifies someone's intimacy. It's the fruit, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness, the self-control. That's the type of stuff that we need to be basing our churches off of, not our gifts, but our fruit. The fruit determines the roots. Mm -hmm. 
The fruit, the amount of fruit shows you how deep the roots are. That's why we're seeing all across the globe pastors falling. And you're going, wait a minute. No, he was an amazing preacher. How could he say this but then live his life this way? It's because we are basing all of, all of, all of it on his gifts. The gifts have nothing to do with him. It's a gift that God's just given him. And we have to be super careful that we're not dependent upon our gifts, but we are dependent upon our fruit because our fruits can only be produced when we are abiding in him. Away from the vine, we are nothing. Mm -hmm. But when we are abiding with him, we have been, been right. given life. That's right. And if we, had, if, if we as, a, as, as a church body, we individually relied more on our, on our fruits mm -hmm. than we did the, than the gifts, we would start to see transformation. We would start to see revelation. We would start to see revival because it's, is this, I hope this is making it sense is. For, a, for, is. for a lot of you. And, and, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's where my heart is just so sad um, that the enemy is seeping into the, into the churches and convincing pastors that it's more about giving people an experience and trying to be impressive and, and trying to get uh, uh, big, large groups of people in, in a church even though those people that there might be a lot of people there, but if the Holy Spirit hasn't been invited in and it's been blocked out, all we are is doing entertainment. And then we're, we're, we're having people come back day after day, week after week, year after year, decade after decade, still at the same seat that they've sat for 25 years and still in bondage to porn, still addicted to alcohol, still codependent on their spouse, still dealing with, with things that have had them shackled for years, but they're there. And I think that's what's breaking my heart is I, I, this is breaking God's heart. It is, yeah. He doesn't want you just to be there for 25, 35, 45, 55 years and listen to an impressive um, music group and, and just be entertained and have a great experience. And that's not what church is supposed to be about. Church was supposed to be about, I got nothing, but you got everything, God. Church was supposed to be about, I have gifts, but I'm going to rely more on my fruits and my gifts because mm -hmm. I, I know that's the only thing that's going to transform another person. I'm going to rely on the Holy Spirit to speak through me, even though I'm not a good communicator. I'm going to let you, God, who is the ultimate communicator, bypass my weakness and you reveal your strength. That's, that's, the, type, that's the type of revival that God is, is after right now. And I heard a quote, Tara, this week, and I shared it with you, um, this message. But this one particular pastor... He said he's going to stop doing church as they used to do it before COVID. And I have, I just, I really re resonated with him. And he said this, COVID to the church was not an interruption, but a reparation. I hope I'm saying that word right. I had to look up that, that word. The word reparation actually means uh, the action of repairing something. So COVID to the church was not an interruption, but a repairment. Mm. And I'm wondering if God is doing some shaking here for us, including mm -hmm. myself, because you are the church. I am the church. The church is not the hope of the world. I know that it's like people are like, what? Jesus is the hope of the world. Amen. The church is the vehicle. We are the vehicle. We are the vessel. The church isn't it. Yeah. He, he is. And what if, we, what, if, what if we just went back to the way it was? Isn't there a verse that says, go back to our old ways? Go back to the ways mm -hmm. that the ancestors did it? And what if we allowed just the Holy Spirit to be the one that's impressive? Yes, yes. What if, what if, what if, yes, we can have an outline, but what if we let the Holy Spirit fill in the gaps? And, and what if we didn't look so impressive and people saw our weaknesses, but, but they heard God's power because he spoke, not us. Nothing memorized, nothing, nothing, just, just him, just him speaking through us. Um, and, and I feel like when I read this last night, I, I wanted to not go here. I wanted to skirt around it. Yeah. And I was going to skirt around it until you put me on the spot to go there. Um, and then this morning, and this is now it's for me. Now I'm convicted. Uh, this morning I'm reading in 2 Samuel and I'm ready to end it. And it's all about David. And then David does his final sin, right? Bathsheba, sinning with Bathsheba's over. And now he does his final sin. And what David does is the enemy gets really close up to David and he says, hey David, you're king of Israel. How about you count every single person that you are king over? Mm. And so David goes, you know what enemy? That sounds like a great idea. And then the word says that God allowed that to happen because he wanted to see, he wanted right. to show David, David, you think you're humble, but you are full of pride. So I'm gonna let the enemy take you down for a hot second so that I can reveal to you that you have pride in you because that pride's gonna kill you. 
The pride yes. will kill you. Yes. The pride will not let the Holy Spirit in. The pride will not let my love in, God says. Pride has to be erad eradicated. And so he has his friend go out, spend months and months and months counting every single person under David, and he brings it back. And as soon as David got the number, you know that number right there, mm -hmm. Tara? As soon as he got that number on the left hand of that screen that you're all looking at right now, as soon as David got it, he was so deeply convicted, he started weeping. And he said, Lord, I have sinned greatly in front of you. And God's like, yes, you have. And the reason is, and this is so interesting to me, I had to do some commentary work on this. And the reason is, is because David thought that for just a hot moment, mm. that that number right there in the left-hand corner, that number on your Facebook feed, that number on your Instagram, all those followers, all those likes that you just got in that picture or the dislikes you got in that picture, all those numbers there. He actually thought that those people belonged to him. And God goes, did I not tell you? Those people aren't yours. Those people are mine. Right. Oh, that church? Those aren't the pastor's sheep. Those are my sheep. These are my people. Oh, those children of yours that you think you're raising joy in your family, those three beautiful, precious, amazing kids? Mm -hmm. You think they're your kids? Oh, no, 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 no. They're my kids. Don't you dare think that, that they belong to you. I've just positioned you. I have granted you. I, you get to be my vehicle, my vessel for them but they're not yours. That's pride if we think that that's ours. Yeah. So when we are talking, when, when we are in a position right now, this is why I've got anxiety in me. When you and I come here every morning at 8 a.m., all this beautiful group of people, they are his. That's, they are his. They are his. And who do we then direct them back to at all times? So if I have something to say mm -hmm. that I want to be impressive, and let me tell, I'm just gonna admit it to all of you. There, most days, I want to impress you. I want to sound smart. I want to look the part. I want to get this all right. Mm -hmm. And part of that is from a, um, um, a weed in my garden of selfishness. And then the, there's a strong part of me that goes, God, I want to just live for you. Yeah. I know that I'm here for such a short time. Will you just bypass through my, just my weaknesses and my feeble words and my, my um, inadequacies because I got so many of them. And will you reveal your strength because I'm so weak, because I, because I don't have it all together, because I can't memorize things, because I can't even know where things are in the book of the Bible. Would you show that your strength is activated in my weakness? And that's where I want to just position and keep my heart. And I don't always get that right. And I, I don't always get that we right. Don't, yeah. But this, um, this is how I want to end it. It is not by might, and it is nor by my power, but by the Spirit of God. Amen. Some trust in their chariots, Tara, mm -hmm. and some trust in their horses. But I, I trust in the name of my Lord. Oof. That's from Psalm 27, and I kept reading that over and over and over and over again today. I will not trust in my own um, ability to communicate. I will not trust in my Facebook followers. I will not trust in that number on the left-hand corner there. I will not trust in my last name. I will not trust in the education. I will not trust in my gifts that God has given to me to be used not before my fruits. I will not trust in that, but I will trust in the fruits, and the fruits are the thing that I'm abiding in, and that is my Jesus. I will trust in the Lord my God, yes. period. And I know I don't get this right, and I'm preaching to myself because I need to be reminded of this. But this is where we have a humble position. This is mm -hmm. where there's going to be lives that are going to be changed. And my heart is for you. My heart, I, I, don't, I can't even wrap my head around this, mm -hmm. how much love I have for his children. Mm -hmm. Which is what this was all about. Which is, which is what this is all about. So I didn't know I was going to go here today. I really pray, I know this is, when it comes to church, there's, there's this, I love, I don't, I'm not even going to explain myself. I just feel like um, he wanted me to share this. So I'm going to mm -hmm. leave it at that mm -hmm. and uh, see where else this hour takes this us. Is, this is why trusting him and locking arms with him, whatever analogy we want to mention, it's a, it's a connectedness. It is an abiding. It is a... Um, a reverence it is the the vine and the branch and it is I am in him and he is in me and and man um, have I just been marinating in this as we are just being his stewards of this barn yeah right and um, you know I, I just I sat here this morning and I was thinking about that I was thinking of I was just spending time with him in in 27 and like I told you, everybody, that um, 
you know, I just didn't want to come about this an assumption of, of, of yesterday because when we turn this off and we went and continue to talk that sometimes we get to, you know, sometimes we get to do that and it's just, it was like, oh my gosh, we have to have a part two. And then today is a whole new day in his word and joy, um, you know, it, it, being three-part beings, our body as a vessel, our soul, and that is where our heart, our mind, our will, our emotions, that's the, uh, and joy was like, uh, and she, let me just use words, but I don't know if it is exactly speaking well for you, but there's this fear component of, will I come off judgmental? Will I come 100%. off hurtful to the local church? Will I offend? Will I say it right? Will I... And the capital S spirit that's linked with the lower S spirit, because that's the other part of our being, is the spirit. And when joy just surrendered, and I surrendered my understanding of what I want this hour to be like. I mean, there's a desire of, oh my gosh, I can't wait to have everyone. And it's, a, it's again, it's a minute by minute surrender. And just being in his presence. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so I'm just bringing to life a little bit more of what this Bible study is all about. It's, it's a, it's a, it is like nothing else I've ever experienced. Hmm. And the barn, this is an act of obedience. This, this place, which where we're sitting is an act of obedience out of the overflow of love that came from trials and tribulations and um, coming from a place of, of, of brokenness. And this is the um, blessings. This is the promises. This is the overflow. But we don't even want to try to stop the overflow of Jesus. Mm -mm. We don't want to put a lid on aspects of what he wants flowing through us. And it's just such an honor to do work this way. This is showing up. This is the doing the work. This is in partnership with what he said to me yesterday that, that came across my mind again today. It's like the sandwich of the day. It's the beginning, the stuff of the day, and the end. And when I read verse 27, it's pure under in God's sight. It's a pure faith, a pure religion, a purity between my Father and me. That's the way to start the day. And when Joy started her day that way, it was her soul didn't like it. Her soul was uncomfortable with how the purity of their relationship made the soul in her, her, her thoughts, her, her emotions. It just, ugh. and that, oof. That's why I said, I dare not talk because Jesus, the Holy Spirit through her has something to say. Let's leave space for that to, to go, in, um, to, to flow. Um, and so it's, it's verse 27 is starting the day pure. It's not starting the day perfect. It's not starting the day, oh, don't you say that until you have this and this and this and until this and until this is, mm -mm. It's a purity of trust and faith, a purity of I believe you, Jesus. And I don't have a lot of, there's some areas I don't believe. That's where my soul is feeling a little icky. And you just, you, you stepped into the unknown, letting him. And so that's the second part. Let's just use James' words of orphans and widows. Yesterday, we talked about the orphan and the widow. It's anchored in this loneliness. It's anchored in, it's, it's the root of orphans and widows is this, we don't have everything put together. We, we, there's a loneliness. We are homesick for heaven. We are aliens. We are not in our home place where we were made. Yep. And so there's going to be this level of, of deprivation and we then yesterday said, we dare not try to find, right, in the meat of the day, we try, please don't let me find that connection, that completeness in things of this world. And, and uh, I'm kind of combining what he said to me, but I'm also 
really using this as an illustration. So we are the widows and the orphans. It, it might be high one day and not so much another day. But where joys, um, where the spirit was speaking through joy is this, is in the, in the emotion is for us as the church. For us as the church to wake up and to know like where are we coming into this world? Where are we showing up as orphans and widows? And this is spiritually speaking. And so we then go into a church building and we don't want, and we, we don't even realize we're all playing a part in this, but we show up dependent on the pastor. We put burdens on church leaders. We put burdens, the church might even put burdens on us to serve from a place of our gifts when we are so not ready for that. And so things get out of order and there's pollution in the air and we don't even know. And we're contributing to it. All of us. We're contributing to it. And the common denominator is we're not consistently speaking the language of heaven. We are getting polluted by the language of this world. And that is serve, serve, help, and, and, and dependent on the pastor, the person on the stage. I have to get in line to speak to him. I have to, I have to talk to him. Oh my gosh, what he just said spoke through me. What they just said spoke to me. I got to talk to them. I got to share my story. I got I to gotta make sense of this. And Jesus is over in the corner. Jesus isn't even in the building. There are some churches that are saying, we got to mute Jesus to get people to come in. Mm -hmm. Do you think he doesn't hear that? Do you think Jesus, our God, our Holy Spirit, do you, he knows he's not welcome in the church because there's just too much entertainment going on. Mm. Because there is, and I wasn't raised in the church. I don't have a holy anger for this. I should, but it's like we have a dependency on the small group leader. We have a dependency on that table in the hallway, on the prayers, on the prayer request. Put your prayers here in this magical box because we know something you don't. Do you know that I took off the prayer requests on our Barn 45 site because of that? Because I dare not have any place that where we could be linked to the power of Jesus Christ. If you go here and put your prayer request here, if you go here and speak to the pastor and wait for his wisdom, if you go here and, and sign up for this small group, where it's like, am I doing, and none of that is bad. It's just out of wrong, it's, it's, uh, it's wrong order. And we don't even realize how we're playing a part in it. And so I took, uh, we're constantly in the spirit saying, what are we doing to contribute to the belief system that we, Joy and Tara, we, Barn 45, we, Jamie and Joy Lee, have something you don't have. We all have it. This is where I get up and I start clapping my hands and I get loud and you get scared. And it's like, we all have it. We all have it. We all have that igniter. It's built in us at birth. But see, that's the it. lie. It is that's the, the lie. That's the pollution yes. of the airwaves from the enemy to tell us that we don't have it. That person on stage with the microphone, with the spotlight, they have it. I recently heard someone say, like, we're stargazing at the wrong star. Come on. Yes. When I read that, I was like, isn't that the truth? What <sighs> that person has with the microphone, what you and I have speaking here, you right now who is taking care of a six-month-old, a three-year-old, and a seven-and-a-half-year-old right now, you have the very same thing we have, and you are... You actually have a more important job of raising those children, even though no one sees you, even yes. though you're not you're not on camera, yes. even though even though you feel like you're just unseen in this world. Jesus sees you. He's got a smile on his face because you are doing the unthinkable yeah. right now. You are raising children yes. to be a blessing in this very dark, broken mm -hmm. world. The very little things actually matter that much more. It's the things that are hidden that God is like, I see you. Don't you dare think I don't see you. Mm -hmm. Don't you dare think it's the person with the spotlight. No, it's my light, not the spotlight to crave. It's my mm -hmm. light I want you to crave. Mm -hmm. It's the little things. Let's get back to the things that 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 matter to get in God's eyes, not the things that matter in the human eyes. Mm -hmm. The numbers, the size of our churches, uh, the person on the stage, the person with the microphone. No, 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 no. No, it's the person serving and cleaning those toilets. Mm -hmm. Those ones. 
That God is like, I well, and, and that God's, I'm sorry. No, go. That God said, serve. Do we stop and say, and, and, and this is, do we stop and ask Jesus, do, what do you want me to do in this church? Lower KC, uh, local church, or in the day? This is why I'm speaking like verse 27 is the structure of our day. Pure and lasting religion in the sight of our God, Father. Father God, who do you want me to serve today? Let him be the one to answer it. Trust him. And you know what's even more powerful? When we have ability to get the, listen to this, when we have ability to get that question answered by someone else or something else, and we don't go there, we go to our Father God. We connect to our Father God and we say, I, I believe that you will give me this answer. I believe it. Do you want me to do this, this, that? Oh, okay, so it's widows and children. Okay, so what do you want me to know about these widows and children before I say a word, before I do a thing? That's the meat of the day, that's the obedience. What do you want? Have your way through me. I'm your vessel. Let's do this together. Tell me. So the, the widows and the orphans in this, in this verse is the doing of the day in this example. And then refuse to let the world corrupt us. Refuse to let the, the carbon monoxide in the air slowly but surely deteriorate at that connectedness with you, Father God. So could it be, could it be that saying, put your prayer request here. I don't know this answer. I've been on my knees in the visible prayer groups that we have here once a week. I'm at once a month, once a month the first Friday of every month, um, it is for the people in the local area, but on my knees begging him and then in my quiet time with him, is it doing a disservice to your church, to your people, if it says, we are prayer warriors, bring us your prayers? And he continuously says yes. And I'm like, okay, but um, I don't understand. I don't have the knowledge. Where in your word does it say it? So I spent a weekend looking it up. I spent a weekend, I, would, I encourage you to do it. Where does it say to run to the pastor for all the guidance and all the wisdom? Where does it say? It does say lock arms. It does say be in community. It does say pray for one another. But, it, but he's trying to explain to me, because I'm a little bullheaded, I'm scared to take that prayer request down. But where do we, where do we pollute the connectedness and the, where do we pollute the connectedness to you, Jesus? Can I help yes. answer that? I think what it is, because I know for me, I felt like the person on stage has a better connection because their gifts are better gifts than mine. And th what God is trying to tell us here is that you are fully furnished. God, yes. if you have asked God into the throne of your heart, you have been given every spiritual resource given to mankind. You alone. You have as just as much spiritual resources as the person that is preaching it on a Sunday morning, using his gifts, not necessarily his fruits. So we have the ability. It says that a, a righteous person, their prayers are effectual and powerful. And guess what? You're righteous. That's right. Because you're not righteous by what you do or don't do, how much you've messed up or not messed up, what you say, what you don't say, that's how right. you behave, what you don't behave. Your righteousness is based off of one thing. That's the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And that's scriptural. You'll find that in Romans over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So you are righteous and a righteous person's yes. prayers are factual and powerful. So right now, yes. that person in your life, that one that you think that if this person prayed for me, they then I, then it would come true. You know, your the power yes. in you, the Holy Spirit in you, the one that resurrected Jesus from the dead lives in you, lives in me, yes. lives in us. That doesn't mean we don't go link arms because we do. There's more. There's power That's in prayer right. with many people yep. that you're doing life with, that know you, that love yes. you, that want to link arms with you. Yes. But don't negate yourself as well. That you alone are fully furnished with every single spiritual resource He wants to give to you. He's given it to you. And so, I mean, I think placing that pollution and getting that, the carbon monoxide is like beeping like crazy right now. The I'm enemy is saying, you. you don't yes. have it in you. You're not righteous. Your, your prayers are just, they fall on deaf ears. God's not even listening to you. He's disgusted with you. He doesn't want to hear your voice. Send that prayer to somebody else that he wants to hear. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's pollution. 
The carbon monoxide is everywhere. Plug it back in. And the only way to plug that, that carbon monoxide um, detector back in is, is this is it. This That's is right. plugging in, being That's reminded right. that you have everything, that he adores you, that he loves you, that he's been fighting for you, that you're enough because he's enough in you. That mm. right there is, is going to change the entire trajectory of your life, your baby's life, the line, the people that you do life with. Uh, there's so much, so much freedom in that truth. Gosh, it's so... This one verse, again, is so packed. That's why you texted me this morning and said, I think we need three days on this verse. You know, and it's, it is because here's where he took me two days ago. It's you reap what you sow. I'm like, why are you taking me there? Yeah. Because this, we're talking about, and this is where I'm looking at the time, and I probably can't get into this, but I believe that this is uh, a word for this, um, this day, well, we for today. Moment. So um, let me take a quick look and just, this is where I'm confident. I don't have to have, you know, say everything, let air time, let this it This is where if I had sit. a voice, I would sing right now for you and entertain people while you're looking. I think it is because of, right? It is because um, it is like, it is the, the yeah, what we reap, we sow. And um, gosh, I think I can. Okay. I think I can. Okay. Okay. So here's, remember, here's, here's the sandwich pure connectedness to God. So I dare not, and I'm so grateful for this connection because I have double, triple, quadrupled my connection to God by making sure um, that nothing defiles my morning, nothing. That the world doesn't get into my morning. And if that means I have to wake up at 4.30 to just get that extra time instead of five o'clock, I will because of the fruit of in the, in the enoughness of Jesus, it has transformed my life. Journaling, being in the word consistently, music to this one's soul. It's not like I didn't do it, it's just the consistency and the, de and the dependency. I've, I have uh, used this analogy before, but it's like that game where you put your hand on the car and you win a prize if you go through, if you're the last one to keep your hand on the car. And so he said, yeah, it's like that. It's like, am I a prize enough? Do you know me enough to know that you dare not be the one to take your hand off the car? So you don't know what I mean by that analogy, that game? I could totally um, see you signing up to do woo, that. I'm so, oh, I don't know, I don't know, man. I, I, I would dare not <laughs> okay, against you. <laughs> Although I can't have any water and don't make me laugh. Um, but yeah, so it, so he brought that, ex that contest. It's a contest. So the first one to take their hand off the car out, the last one to keep their hand on the car wins the car. And he's like, do you see it like that? Where the connectedness, the vine and the branch that it's, it's not that you win this, the car. I mean, we're talking beyond going to heaven. We are talking about abundance promises revealed, um, blessings pouring out over you like Niagara Falls. Do you want to take your hand off of this car? Mm -hmm. Do you want to take your hand off of the vibration of the Holy Spirit? Do you want your soul connected to me, Father God, soul and spirit connectedness? That if you dare not let anything of this world while you're doing my will, while you're serving orphans and widows. Don't take your hand off. Don't disconnect spirit and soul. Stay connected. It's like an umbilical cord. I mean, he had the analogies, just making wow. sure that my thick headedness, do you understand? This is where there's a dependency, not on anyone else. That's how you start your morning. Sometimes before the feet even hit the floor, reintroduce yourself to to the creator, to where we all came from. Then serve, move into my will. That's where we are reaping what we're sowing and we're sowing into this world. What are we sowing is the question. What's coming from us? And what resources are we, right? It's the seeds, we're sowing seeds. But where are we getting these seeds? What resources are we sharing? What um, tools are we using? 
What training, what answers, what equipment are we using? Joy and I are like this. This is the farmer sowing seeds. Mm -hmm. It's coming from the overflow of this. Pastors and churches, there is curriculum. There is a series. But this mm -hmm. is where it comes from. Come are on. we brave enough? to have a series, a structure, something, but then to go, man, when I was in the Word this morning, Little congregation, righteous. congregation, I got something for you that came through me because I'm so connected. This is, mm -hmm, this trumps a series. Karen. This trumps curriculum teachers. You're gonna make me do the ugly cry all. This Seriously, is where you're gonna make me do the ugly well, cry. Well, it's your one fault. One it's your fault. <laughs> no, this, but is, this is this, this is, is where God's the, This me. is where we're finally broken free. This is where we're finally broken open. This is where we are finally experiencing the intimacy of our Father that I'm desperate for every single one of us to have. Is in what you just said. Yes, I've got an outline. Yes, I've got a word. But Lord, you. What you just shared with me overrides that. Yes. The Holy Spirit overflowing through me just pierced someone's heart and changed that person and the yes. generations to follow. And because you started in the church, this is no different. He's like, yeah. we are all farmers in the field. And I'm going to let myself go over time here for just a minute or seven. Um, we are farmers sowing what? Yeah. Journal that. What That's are we good. sowing? The field is the field. When I was in education, oh my goodness, if I knew what I knew now, this would have been the best teacher's manual. And I could bawl my eyes out when I think about the children that received my message, 25 children, and I had shelves filled with curriculum. Mm. Oh my gosh, but I'm afraid that if I don't do this and this math lesson and this science lesson and this social studies lesson, poof, onto those children. That's what the pastors sometimes might feel. How about you in your field and the work that you're doing right now when you got us in your ear? What about being that bank teller? What if we sowed from this being the place that we put our hands in that feed and we grabbed the seeds of this word and then we went out in our unique calling in our field and we sowed the seed of the resource that came from this? The field guide doesn't matter what our occupation is. It doesn't matter the calling. It doesn't matter if you're in your living room just tearing your, like, I won't even say it negatively. You are the homeschool teacher that you didn't choose to be, but he said that's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. This is the field guide to the field of the day. James is saying widows and orphans, he's speaking to all of us anyway. But whatever it is that God is calling us into that day, what is in our hand that we are spreading? And did it come from this resource? Probably not. It came from a lot of other books, a lot of other manuals, a lot of other opinions, a lot of other bosses, a lot of other fear-based, number-based, beep, 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 based junk. That the world is, is, we have to detox from the toxicity of our fear-based, world-driven, bosses, ill perspective. We're all ill-equipped, but if we start the day in this world as farm, in this word as farmers, and we're sowing the seed in the day, and then James goes on to say, and refuse to let the world corrupt us. So yesterday, he had me journaling at night. <laughs> I wanted to watch Netflix. I want to watch that. And I did. I watched a show with my husband or we did some other things. I spent some time with a friend. But before I closed my eyes, I had this very journal open and I defiled. I cleansed myself of the junk that I collected. I sniffed it out with my Holy Spirit sniffer. What do I dare not close my eyes and let it take root? What of the day? I wanted to get it out. Dare not let the world, and my word was corrupt. Corrupt means don't exchange, don't return. Mm. I, oh, you know what, enemy? Yeah, you know what? That hurt. That was aggravating. That meeting I was in, it stole my, it stole my peace. 
And then, you know what though, I'm gonna get on with the doings of the day, I'm gonna sow my seed, I'm aggravated, I'm not gonna do anything with it. But at the end of the day, I dare not let that corrupt the peace of the Holy Spirit that wants to rest upon me at night while I rest. So, I mean, I had some arguing sessions with him. I'm like, I, I, I'm with you all morning, I'm with you all day, and now you want me to journal at night? And he goes, if you don't wanna be corrupt from the world, it's up to you though. You wanna keep your hand on the car? Do you want the blessings and the promises? Yeah, you might wanna trust me that, and this is for me, that I journal at night before I go to sleep. And I'll try it, I'll keep, I'll try. But listen, James 27 isn't messing around. It's the sandwich of the day. Purity, move into his will, purity, at the same time, always, always abiding in that view of our Father. Just saying. We're just saying on this eight o'clock hour. <laughs> oh, and this one was afraid, which it's me too, to say the very thing that she just said. It just set. We will never know who got set free. And if joy put a cap on the overflow and on what, jo on what the Holy Spirit wanted to say through her, Jesus manifesting through her, I don't know what, I can't, I dare not even try to wrap my brain around the freedom and the acknowledgement and maybe if there's pastors or people going to church or people going into work. This one set so many free because she did not put a cap on what kind of made her uncomfortable. Like, ugh, she just said, get out of here, enemy. Get out, I have a word for the church. And so many people are set free because you didn't fear saying the very thing that needed to be said. So hmm. thank you. Wow. Yeah. I want to thank you. I did have fear, but he pushed me through it. You did. So thank you. Gently. Uh, and thank you all for, for um, being here today and seeing our ugly, my ugly cry today. Um, but I wanted to, before we do pray, Jean said, why don't we start taking our Bible to church? And Jean, thank you for saying that. Um, I didn't take my Bible to church for the last decade. And then just during quarantine, God said, girl, you dare not ever step into that foot of the church. This is not legalism. But if you're telling people mm -hmm. that this very thing is alive and active, why are you going into church without it? Being dependent upon the screens. And uh, so I really want to start a new thing. Like, your church has all, yep, it's, got, it's going to have it all there. But bring your Bible to church. Because that Bible in your hands, that Bible in your lap, your Bible, your children seeing it on you, feeling the pages of your Bible, um, it, 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 it's going to change you. It's going to change, it's going to change the 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 pollution of the church out. See ya. No more carbon monoxide in this church. The Bible is here. The Bible is open. The Bible is alive. The Bible is active, activated. Jesus is back in the church. Jesus is back. He's there. Jesus that's, is back in the church. That's who yeah. we're connecting to, beginning, middle, and end, not people. Yep. Yep. Not people. Oh, this is good. I need to go home and take a nap. <laughs> I know. Now that it's nine o'clock, good night. <laughs> Uh, but we're not exhausted with doing this work when we're not dependent on each other as I people. Know, I know it. It's freeing. It's it. it's freeing. It, it frees up our pastors. It frees up our bosses. It frees up uh, our fellow colleagues. It's so freeing to be dependent every second of the day on Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, I'll stop talking. All right, let's pray. Let's pray because we have the power. We all Amen. are prayer warriors. We have the power. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this visualization of connection. Lord Jesus, will you just please, please plant that exact image on everybody's mind right now, where it's so easy to have the images of this world right now, I exchange it. I wanna corrupt this world with the heavens. Mm -hmm. I want an imagery of a connectedness between you and me, God, you and me, me and you. I think that's a poem mm -hmm. that must have been written through someone um, because of you, mm -hmm. you and me, me and you. I don't want to, nothing of this world is worth exchanging, worth um, the, the bribery of, of Satan, the pollution of Satan willing to exchange something better in this world, someone better, someone with wisdom. I dare not ever again knowingly or in my subconscious, 
Allow the world to corrupt my connectedness to you. Thank you right now for that image that's in my mind that is gonna be planted in my heart, that is gonna take over my soul, whatever it is. Thank you for giving us that imagery. That in that moment when my, my fruits of your spirit are stolen, trying to be snatched from me, I'm gonna be like a little kid in a lollipop. No, you don't. You can't have this. It's mine, we say to Satan. Uh -huh. It's mine. It belongs to me. It's my Holy Spirit. It's my Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. You can't have it. It's my heaven. Uh -huh. You can't have it. You can't have the fruits of the Spirit. This is my peace. Let go. This is my uh, gentleness. This is my self-control. Uh, this is my patience. You can't steal it ever again. It's mine. It's his. It's ours. We're married, never to be disconnected. He's my father. He's my savior. He's my mighty counselor. I am in line. I am speaking to him. I am praying to him. Not that I don't want anyone else helping me in prayer. You can pray with me. But never again is anyone going to pray for me. No one's going to pray on my behalf. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to stay connected. Me and God, God and me, I'm going to speak to him throughout the day. No one else can do that for me ever again. There's no shame. There's no guilt. There's no fear. There's nothing. There's no animosity for the church in this hour. You can't have that enemy. That is not words we're speaking. We're speaking words of freedom. We are locking arms. We are locking tight. I am the birthmark of Jesus Christ, cannot be removed. He is a birthmark on me that cannot be removed. Thank you for James 27. Thank you for illuminating it off the page. Thank you that it was not scripted. Thank you for this hour. Thank you for this act of obedience that you have placed on our hearts, that we are doing this as farmers in the field with pure gladness. Thank you, and I'm speaking to all of us as we enter into this day, into our field, into our territory that you've asked us to show up. Boy, Jesus is going to be visible today. Mm -hmm. Have your way. And then we will close up the day and know and list off the junk that we collected while we got dirty in the field because we are not afraid of getting dirty, mm -hmm. but we are afraid of bringing that to bed. Mm -hmm. Have your way, Jesus. Thank you for what you first did for us. Thank you for loving us mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. so that all of this is possible. Mm -hmm. We pray all of this in your mighty, glorious, beautiful, powerful name, freeing name, loving name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you have to stop? Can you just keep praying? Oh, no, man. I want to sit in this hour, too. Gosh. But he wants us to go into this day carrying this energy. Come on. Right? Don't you feel it? Today is a special day. That prayer was mm. that prayer was straight from my papa's mouth. So thank you. It was. Thank you. It was. Love you all yes. way more than they have. They have no idea. And it's because <laughs> I have you no love I them. don't even have any idea how deep my love is for them. The fact that you did what you just did shows how much you love their heart. I think it's mutual. Pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. Love I you love, all. I love the fireworks. I know, the heart fireworks. Back at you. Thank love you. Love you all very much. Let's go get connected to Lord every day. Love you all. Bye.